From the deepest, darkest trenches to the calm blue coasts, the oceans are full of life, and they've been that way for millions of years. Many of us associate the oceans with wonder and imagination, curious as to what could lie below the surface, while many others associate the ocean with fear, terror, and an instinct to stay away. Both are valid and understandable perspectives, and those who fear the ocean fear what they don't see, what they don't understand, and what we haven't discovered. But how much do you think they'd fear the ocean if they knew what kind of horrors used to live within? Typically, these days, only a few reptiles are heavily associated with the open ocean. These special few are marine iguanas, crocodiles, turtles, and snakes, and when most people think of the ocean, they don't automatically think reptile. In the last 60 million years, reptiles in the ocean have taken a backseat to the newcomers, the mammals, who have dominated many niches throughout the ocean and are often the first things people think about when thinking of the ocean. Blue whales are massive, dolphins are iconic, and orcas are downright terrifying. But it wasn't always that way. In the past, reptiles used to dominate the seas, and no other group could contest that for millions of years. From what we can tell, reptiles may have taken to the seas even prior to the Triassic, and eventually they ruled and dominated the ocean. The success of these early reptiles led to some absolute monsters dominating the primordial seas and leaving their mysteries behind for us to find. The sizes of these animals are often difficult to figure out for multiple reasons, which has led to much confusion amongst the public. However, today I hope to shed that confusion. These are the top 10 largest marine reptiles of all time that we know of. Before we really begin, there's a few things to take note of. For one, marine reptiles, including every single one that appears on this list, are not dinosaurs. Many of you might already be aware of that, and many of you might not. That being said, as of right now, there are no known fully aquatic dinosaurs, though there were some with aquatic tendencies, such as Spinosaurus and Halsecoraptor. However, neither of these dinosaurs, or any dinosaur for that matter, were fully committed to a marine lifestyle, and therefore are not qualified as largest marine reptiles. On top of that, this video is about reptiles, so no mammals, sharks, or otherwise will appear, including the likes of Basilosaurus and Megalodon. Also, while there have been some absolutely massive crocodilians, none of them have been fully committed to a marine lifestyle, and thus they will not appear on this list. With all that out of the way, remember, these sizes are always subject to change in the future as we learn more about these amazing animals. But where are we right now? To find out, let's start with our first animal, coming in at number 10 on our list, Temnodontosaurus. Temnodontosaurus, the cutting tooth lizard, is an ichthyosaur from the early Jurassic of Western Europe. There are multiple species within this genus, but the largest ones were absolutely massive creatures. The largest of these animals could reach 33 feet or 10 meters in length and weigh up to 8 tons. There have been estimates in the past that have suggested Temnodontosaurus could possibly be even larger, however most of these are considered overestimates. Ichthyosaurs in general are already well known for their large eyes, but Temnodontosaurus takes this a step further as they have one of, if not the largest eye in the fossil record at nearly 8 inches wide. These large eyes would have given them amazing visual capacity, allowing them to hunt much more effectively as they were thought to be an apex predator in their oceans. Their large size, coupled with their dangerous teeth, would have allowed them to take on nearly any prey in their environment. Though it is thought that some species of Temnodontosaurus preferred smaller and soft-bodied prey, such as squid, rather than other large reptiles. These massive predators would have hunted in the open ocean, away from the shoreline or the seafloor. With that in mind, there's a possibility that they were countershaded to allow them to hunt their prey from below. While they may not look it, they are powerful, gigantic, and terrifying animals, but they're still only number 10 on our list. Coming in at number 9, we have the first pliosaur on our list, Sachikosaurus. Typically, it is far more common for people to know about plesiosaurs rather than pliosaurs. From what we can tell, pliosaurs split off from plesiosaurs about 200 million years ago because that's when the first pliosaurs began to appear. Instead of the incredibly slender and long body plan of the plesiosaurs like Elasmosaurus, these guys went with a much more robust and short-necked build. Sachikosaurus itself is a relatively new discovery. It was found in 2013, but it wasn't named until 2018. Despite how new it is, we have relatively good fossil material for it, giving us a pretty good idea of how big this creature was. Sachikosaurus was thought to be between 33 to 36 feet in length, between 10 to 11 meters long, and weighing up to 10 tons. Compared to other pliosaurs, they have rather slender teeth, and this may be because they share territory with a lot of other pliosaurs. This suggests that they may have niche 
flesh partition to reduce competition between themselves and other pliosaurs. Long and slender teeth could suggest that they may have targeted smaller and soft-bodied prey such as fish. However, they are one of the largest predators in their environment, and I wouldn't put it past them to hunt other creatures such as ichthyosaurs. Hopefully future studies can teach us more about this new and large pliosaur. Coming in at number 8 on our list, we have our first mosasaur, Tylosaurus prorigger. Mosasaurs, unlike ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, and pliosaurs, are actually directly related to creatures that are alive today. The exact origin of ichthyosaurs is shrouded in mystery, so we're not going to go too much into that. And when it comes to pliosaurs, they are part of a group known as Sauropterygia. This makes their closest living relatives turtles, but they're not directly related to turtles. From what we can tell, turtles and their ancestors may have split off before pliosaurs and plesiosaurs first began to emerge. Thus, they have no modern analogs, but mosasaurs do. You see, mosasaurs are part of the group called squamata, which are all lizards and snakes. You can essentially think of mosasaurs as giant monitor lizards, as that's what their ancestors probably were. Tylosaurus is an incredibly old type of mosasaur, first named all the way back in 1869, and it was actually the third type of mosasaur to be named from North America. It was discovered as part of the Bone Wars, and as such it has a kind of messy history and wasn't given a proper name until much later down the line. Regardless, Tylosaurus has become one of the most popular mosasaurs in modern media, and it has become a worldwide name. Unfortunately, like many other marine reptiles, the size of Tylosaurus has never exactly been clear, and there's been a lot of different sizes proposed. Some have suggested enormous sizes, up to 52 feet, nearly 16 meters long, but most people consider that a little bit of an overestimate. However, these days we have a bit of a reserved estimate, putting them at 39 to 46 feet or 12 to 14 meters and weighing around 10 tons. Now, I know what you're going to say. How is it bigger than Sachikosaurus since Sachikosaurus was also, you know, 10 tons? Now, that's when length typically matters. Because it's both longer and around the same weight, it would be the bigger animal. Like many of the animals on this list, Tylosaurus was one of the dominant predators in its time, and it's actually been well recorded with its stomach contents. These range from everything you'd expect, from fish and turtles, all the way up to other mosasaurs. Of course, they are relatively robust and powerfully built animals, however, they're not quite as densely built as other mosasaurs such as Prognathodon or Mosasaurus. Make no mistake, they are an incredibly deadly predator, but they still only come in at number 8. Coming in at number 7, we have two species sharing this slot, both of them pliosaurs. Like before, both of these are large and powerful predators, and they're actually around the same size according to our best estimates. However, we will be talking about another pliosaur very closely related to Pliosaurus rossicus later in the video. Because of that, we will focus number 7 mainly on Kronosaurus. Kronosaurus is another famous pliosaur, largely in part to its name which references the Greek titan Kronos. Despite its incredible fame, there's actually been some contentious points on Kronosaurus in recent years. A study from 2021 looked at all known fossil material from Kronosaurus and suggested that they were all part of different species and that Kronosaurus itself was an invalid taxon. While some of these new pliosaurs have been accepted, others haven't been met with the same welcome. The study in 2021 intended to replace the name Kronosaurus with a new name, Ictus. However, that move has been heavily criticized, and many of the papers that have come out since then still refer to Kronosaurus rather than this Ictus. As of right now, most scientists seem to consider Kronosaurus as a valid taxon, so that's where we'll keep it. That being said, this guy and Plysaurus rossicus were incredibly large, between 33 to 36 feet, 10 to 11 meters, but these guys weighed around 12 tons. The weight may have been due to the cold environment that Kronosaurus lived in. It is known from a shallow sea in what is modern-day Australia, which at the time was thought to reach near-freezing temperatures. Despite that, these animals became large, powerful, and terrifying creatures. But the next animal on our list will probably surprise every one of you. This is Aristonectes, whose name literally means best swimmer. Due to its fragmentary nature in the past, we haven't known a whole lot about this animal. But as science advances and we find more specimens, we learn more and the puzzle becomes a little clearer. Aristonectes is part of the Aristonectini, a subgroup of the plesiosaurs known as Elasmosaurids. The Aristonectini can be distinguished from other plesiosaurs and elasmosaurs by having an incredibly short neck compared to its relatives with a relatively large skull. With this unusual body plan, they could reach a massive size, reaching between 36 to 39 feet or 11 to 12 meters and weighing up to 13 tons. 
Despite its massive size, this is the only creature on our list that isn't the apex predator of its environment, or an apex predator of its environment. Aristonectes is thought to employ a similar feeding method to modern gray whales. They will scoop up mouthfuls of sand and other sediment and use their interlocking teeth to push the sand out of their mouth and keep inside any food that they might have captured. This type of feeding is what made them so large in the first place, and honestly, I appreciate having such a unique number six. Coming in at number five, we go back to our powerful and terrifying marine predators, a pliosaur that was once known as Predator X. This is Pliosaurus funci, a close relative of the creature I mentioned earlier, Pliosaurus rossicus. This animal received a lot of media attention when it was first discovered, before it was even officially named, and unfortunately that led to a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, blown up media proportions. There have been some incredibly large size suggestions in the past, even those exceeding 50 feet or 50 15 meters in length. However, as often happens, as we learn more about these animals, we learn that they might be smaller or even bigger than we originally thought. Current estimates place Predator X between 10 to 13 meters or 33 to 43 feet in length and weighing up to 13 tons. They are the largest pliosaur species, and to say that they were an apex predator is a bit of an understatement. These guys lived in the late Jurassic, and they would have been one of the dominant predators in those seas, being able to take on basically anything they wanted. The fossils of these animals were found between 2008 and 2012, and it was nicknamed Predator X by the media before being officially named in 2012. They are one of the largest marine reptiles of all time, but they still only come in at number 5. Coming in at number 4, we have undoubtedly the most famous animal on this list, one that I guarantee you've probably heard of before, Mosasaurus. Now, simply saying the term Mosasaurus can be a bit confusing if you know a little bit about Mosasaurus. That's because there's an insane number of Mosasaurs split into multiple different groups. In fact, the animal taking our number four spot is in a completely different Mosasaur lineage than the previous Mosasaur on our list, Tylosaurus. Our number four spot goes to the largest Mosasaur that ever lived that we know of, Mosasaurus hoffmanni. In the past, the size estimates for this animal have been unreliable at best, mainly due to just how much confusion there is about Mosasaurus itself, with so many different specimens being attributed to this genus. However, studies over the last decade or so have cleared this up a bit for us, giving us more reliable size estimates. Current maximum estimates for Mosasaurus put them between 43 and 49 feet, 13 to 15 meters, and weighing anywhere from 13 to 15 tons. As I mentioned earlier, they're essentially giant aquatic monitor lizards and have a very similar skull shape aside from their teeth, which are much larger. Another cool thing about mosasaurs and one thing that the Jurassic World films actually did right was giving them pterygoid teeth. These teeth are located further inside the mosasaur's mouth on what's known as a pterygoid bone. These teeth were thought to be used in a special method of feeding seen today in living snakes known as walk feeding, where they would kind of walk their jaw over their prey's corpse. Except they're in the middle of the ocean and can probably use the momentum a little bit better. Mosasaurus Hoffmanni had an incredibly powerfully built skull with powerful teeth to coincide. These teeth were large and robust, but they also had serrations on them, fine cutting edges to assist them in killing prey. It's believed that when hunting, most of Mosasaurus' speed comes from its tail while using its flippers to steer itself and paddle along. They don't have the greatest sense of smell, but to make up for it, they have fairly large eyes. All of this combined shows us that Mosasaurus quickly became one of the dominant predators in its ecosystem, capable of taking on whatever it wanted. As of this moment, there's not a creature that lived alongside Mosasaurus that we don't believe Mosasaurus could have hunted. Even other Mosasaurs, including the animal I mentioned earlier, Tylosaurus, would be on the menu. When it comes to giant marine reptiles, this is probably what most folks think of when it comes to the largest. And Mosasaurus may be one of the most ferocious predators our oceans have ever seen but they still only rank at number four. Now, aside from the beginning with Temnodontosaurus, some of you may be wondering, where are all the ichthyosaurs? Aren't they all, you know, larger than most of the other marine reptiles? While many of the ichthyosaurs are incredibly large, a lot of them don't actually reach the sizes of a lot of the animals in this video. But if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you know that they are some of the biggest creatures that ever lived in the ocean. So taking our number three spot, we have Shonisaurus popularis, one of the two species of Shonisaurus. Unlike other ichthyosaurs, which have a very dolphin-like appearance, this animal looks like what you would get if you crossed a dolphin with a whale. They were thought to have a rather rotund body with no dorsal sail. At the same time, they also had an incredibly long and thin set of jaws. Traditionally, while they have been depicted like this as an incredibly rotund animal, in more recent years we've discovered that they may actually be more slender than originally thought. 
Regardless of how slender we believe it is now, it is still an absolutely massive creature. Modern estimates put Shonisaurus popularis at 49 feet or 15 meters in length and weighing around 30 tons. Now, I'm not sure if you quite caught that, but that's about double what the last creature, Mosasaurus, was. Ichthyosaurs simply have a much larger body plan overall than other creatures, so if they can attain those massive lengths, they'll be significantly heavier. Traditionally, we believe that Shonisaurus may have started with teeth as young animals, but lost those teeth as they grew. However, more recent studies suggest that they had teeth throughout the entirety of their lives, which would change how we look at them significantly. Because we thought that they lacked teeth, we assumed that they only targeted soft-bodied prey, such as squids or similar. However, the revelation that they most likely had teeth throughout the entirety of their lives opens the menu up significantly. And it suggests they may have been able to take on larger prey, but we don't really know to what extent. Regardless, these massive animals are certainly impressive, but they still only take our number three spot. Coming in at number two, we have an animal that many of you probably haven't heard of before, but this is Symbospondylus youngorum. They were another ichthyosaur from the mid-Triassic, and they've been found in both North America and Europe. Symbospondylus is rather unique when it comes to giant ichthyosaurs, with a vastly different body plan than you would expect when you look at animals like Shonisaurus. Instead, Symbospondylus is very slender, almost like a sea serpent rather than a dolphin. They kind of look like a very compact mosasaur or a very elongated pliosaur. These older giants have smaller eyes and a less developed tail than other ichthyosaurs, meaning it's a little more primitive. In fact, Symbospondylus is one of the oldest known ichthyosaurs, thought to have arrived somewhere between 242 to 247 million years ago. But don't let their age fool you, these animals are still giants. At its largest, Symbospondylus is thought to reach 58 feet or about 17 and a half meters in length and weigh around 49 tons. Again, another huge leap from the previous number at 30 tons. These animals had powerful blunt cone-shaped teeth and were thought to mainly feed on cephalopods and fish. But their giant size would have allowed them to eat other prey, including other Symbospondylus, though we don't know if they were cannibalistic. What we do know is that opposed to later ichthyosaurs who are built for speed, these guys are built for ambush hunting. Their incredibly long and slender body was actually part of this hunting strategy. Their body would be able to move essentially with their tail, allowing them some incredible bursts of speed. They are an incredibly impressive animal and certainly deserving of our number two spot. Before we continue, let's talk about some honorable mentions to creatures that couldn't quite make it on this list. Prognathodon, an impressive and incredibly powerful mosasaur that's unfortunately not quite heavy enough to make it onto the list. Leopleurodon, a creature that was once thought to be incredibly massive, but nowadays we know that it has a much more reserved body size. Shastasaurus, a creature that's often confused for our number one spot, but we'll talk more about that when we get into number one. Aust Colossus and the Swiss Tyrant are two massive ichthyosaur specimens that still remain undescribed. Both of these specimens definitely have the potential to usurp number one, but unfortunately, until they receive an official description, they still won't make it onto this list. In that same vein, there's been some undescribed pliosaur remains that could put Predator X or similar creatures even larger. So let's have a moment of silence for all the awesome creatures that just couldn't quite make it here. And that brings us to number one, the largest marine reptile currently known in existence, Shonisaurus sicaniensis. Now, some people will say that this animal is Shasasaurus and not Shonisaurus, and there's good reason for that. When this specimen was originally discovered, it was immediately placed into Shonisaurus in its initial description in 2004. However, a re-evaluation in 2011 suggested that it may have actually been a Shastasaur rather than Shonisaurus. But in 2013, this was revised again, placing it back within Shonisaurus. There has been a lot of back and forth on this topic, with the most recent placing it within Shonisaurus again in 2021. So for now, this massive specimen will be considered Shonisaurus as opposed to Shastasaurus. If you thought the creatures before now were big, then you're certainly not ready for this. Shonisaurus sicaniensis was thought to reach up to 69 feet, nice, or 21 meters in length, and were thought to weigh up to 90 tons. Just to kind of put that into perspective for you, that's around the same size as some of the smaller blue whales. 
that's bigger than the Megalodon. Now, their exact position within the food chain is kind of unclear because we don't know for sure if they did or didn't have teeth when they were older. More recent research suggests that Shonisaurus had teeth throughout the entirety of its life, which does suggest that this specimen would have also had teeth. Now, having teeth versus not having teeth puts them at very different spots in an ecosystem. If they didn't have teeth, then they most likely hunted soft-bodied prey like squids and may have employed something called suction feeding to do so. This type of feeding allows the animal to open its mouth incredibly fast and essentially create a vacuum underneath the water, sucking in water and anything else in front of its mouth at the time. This would have been particularly effective against animals like squid, which use sort of a jet propulsion to get themselves through the water. However, if they did have teeth at the adult stage, they would have been a much more lethal predator and likely took on larger prey. Unfortunately, unless we discover more about their jaws and their hunting strategies, we won't really know for sure which one is accurate. Though, if I remember right, the suction feeding theory is heavily contested, so we will definitely have to wait and see on that. Regardless, these massive predators would have certainly ruled the ocean to some capacity in their time, and certainly earned the title of the largest marine reptile that ever lived. Hi folks, thank you all so much once again for watching the video. It means so, so very much to me. I haven't made a top 10 video since last year, so if you enjoyed this and want me to make another one, make sure to leave a comment below. But as always, folks, have a fantastic day, make sure to be good people, and I'll see you guys in the next one.